Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. Always excited to give you guys fresh episodes every week. Uh, today, you're joining me from Titan's Power Band Grill. As you know, this is a beautiful place for you guys to come and chill, eat, drink, and also there are rooms if you decide to sleep here. You can come through your car, can be washed in front of the Titanic car wash. So this is the place to be. Everything is right here for you guys to enjoy. My guest today is probably one of the people that most of you didn't expect me to chat with. She is uh, a very loving woman, very smart woman, smart on the money especially, but also she's married to one of the biggest celebrities in the country, my mentor, Innocent Kalaluka. I'm talking about Nora Kalaluka. Today I'll be chatting with her and we'll just get to know about her and I think she'll educate us a lot more about money. Join me on the other side. Welcome back guys. So I mentioned in the opening that I am chatting with a lady that I think a lot of you didn't expect to see on my show, uh, Nora Kalaluka. I talked about her in the opening and I say that Nora Chanda Kalaluka, this is a woman who was never seen in the spotlight. And I'm so happy and honored to be sitting with her and we just try to get as candid as possible. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Thanks for agreeing. You know, even when I was asking you to come on the show, I wasn't so sure you were going to agree. So I'm really happy that you actually agreed. Thanks. Uh, firstly, uh, I have so many questions, but I would like to know what even made you comfortable to agree to come on <laughs> the show. <laughs> okay, for starters, I've been watching your show for a very long time. I've yeah. Probably the only thing I think I haven't done is follow. Okay. But also, why i don't know i'm just now thinking <laughs> about it but yeah. i've been watching i've been watching you and yeah. i think i like what you do thank you and so first it was like a surprise when you asked me to come i'm like what what am i going to talk about and but um yeah i've been following you a lot and i think you're doing a good job thank you thank you so much so before uh, uh we get into the um, i i, I want to know like you i think people want to know who nora chanda kalaluka is people barely know anything about her because I think you recently just joined social media. How many, has it been a year already, a year plus? No, actually from uh, 2018, but I've been on the quiet side, just yeah. posting without my pictures. And then eventually I would slot in a few of my pictures. Yeah. But now I think um, I got to a point where I could even have a live show. So, which was, oh my goodness. <laughs> but <was> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, I mean, you have a camera with you, but you yeah. feel like the whole world is looking at you. Yeah, yeah. but who, yeah. Who wasn't uh, innocent there to like uh, no. push you? He's and... never, no, he's actually never been anywhere around my production. Why? Would you want him to be around no. or you don't want him? No, I mean, that experience to come to, it would be like, ah, don't do this, don't do <laughs> yeah, that. I know, right? Do this, but yeah. um, that's not the only reason. I think he's, he's in a totally different space like I am. So I, I want to do me. Okay, yeah. you don't want him to disturb you or... Not really he... disturbing, but um, I don't think I'd have a problem working with him that much. But uh, I don't think he's interested so much in what I do. Okay. So it would be like maybe a drug kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who encouraged you to join social media? So when I, when I left my formal employment, but before then, I had a side business. It was okay. a network marketing business. Okay. And that worked very well when I was working. Mm -hmm. Now I've come to believe I had a lot more sales because of the position that I had. Mm -hmm. Because the same customers could no longer give me the same kind of business that they gave me. Okay. After I left formal employment. So I thought of a way I could have that income. And most people mentioned social media. So I was never on any social media apart from WhatsApp. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. So it was so difficult to get to this decision mm -hmm. and um, work around my business like that. So I thought of being professional about it. So I, I got a um, coach from America mm -hmm. to run me through like the social media okay. program. Yeah. So, um, so mainly it was taking the network marketing business onto social media. 
And the other reason for that is that when I left the former employment, I decided to increase my faith, my Christian faith, and that required that I do a lot of preaching, like outside preaching, door-to-door -door preaching. Okay. So that meant I wouldn't be able to do that business physically. Mm -hmm. So I then thought, let me put this on social media while I move this, this part of my, <laughs> my life forward. Yeah. So then after getting that coach, she, well, very, very different from the kind of social media that we do. Yeah. And so we got talking and then she says, why are you just doing network marketing? I mean, this is not your company. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you get your monies from here, and, yeah. but you shouldn't front your company yeah. because you are just an agent. Mm -hmm. In as much as this is what you're doing, you're getting your money from here. Yes, you love your company, so don't front your products. Like, don't say, this is what I'm doing in people's faces. Let people ask, like curiosity. Yeah. So I lost weight. So what is it that you're using? You know that kind of yeah. marketing? Yeah. So then afterwards she says, but what do you love? What, what's your passion? Yeah. So I mentioned and she says, oh girl, you're sitting on gold. And I'm like, what are you talking about? All that worth of information that you have regarding your financials. Mm -hmm. So why don't you help out? You, you mean you don't have women in your country that you can help out? Yeah. So from then I got interested and I realized, yes, there are a number of people, actually women, mm -hmm. who are kind of laid back in terms of uh, financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And so I started helping financial literacy to women. Nice. And that's how come I, I found myself on that space. Nice. Okay, yeah. so I'll just uh, roll it back and we take it back to the young Nora. Born and bred Lusaka? Yes. <laughs> I was born here in Lusaka. Um, though I did my secondary school in Western Province, mm -hmm. so like for how did you find yourself uh, in Western Province? My dad was transferred there. Okay. Um, he was transferred there, and within I think three months he was transferred to Mongo, and within three months he had to move to Senanga. So that's how I was then taken into a boarding school. Initially I was a day scholar, but mm -hmm. because Senanga was far away from Mongo where yeah. I was, I was at Holy Cross Girls. And so I had to go into boarding school. Oh. And then I think six months later, I was transferred back to Lusaka. So I back. ended up, no, no, no. I ended up remaining there. The whole family moved. So uh -huh. yeah, I did my secondary school in a boarding school. Okay. Mm. Then um, you, you talked about how you didn't, you're an accountant by profession. Banker. Banker. What's the difference? Okay. Um, accounting is to do with numbers. Mm -hmm. To do financial reports mm -hmm. um, though I did accounting mm -hmm. but profession mm -hmm. it's uh, banking so I worked in the banking industry yeah. and I worked for a bank and rose through the ranks to um, a senior manager position okay mm -hmm. so uh, just uh, you 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 mentioned about how you started working immediately after uh, high school what mm -hmm. happened okay so I didn't get the grades to be sponsored by government I, mm -hmm. I Qualified quite well, mm -hmm. but I couldn't go to university. My, my aim was to go to the University of Zambia. Okay. But um, I didn't get the grades to get sponsorship. So that became a bit difficult because there were no finances to sponsor me. Yeah. I'm the first of five girls, yeah. so I, there was no other help I could get. Yeah. So the option was to start working. And so it was immediately, I completed in 1992, and... Um, 1994, 1993, end of 1993, I started working. Mm -hmm. It was a part-time job, but that gave me an opportunity to save. Yeah. So I saved and went to school uh, in the evenings. So I, I did a part-time school, but evening. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I, I started with my diploma in accounting. And every, every year, so my funds were like really tight yeah. because I had to take myself to school. I also had to provide like transport to get to the office and things like oh, that, yeah. yeah. But um, looking back, I think it's built me to who I am today. Mm -hmm. So yes, in as much as that challenge was there then, but um, I think with every challenge, one has to look at it from a positive avenue. Like what is it that you get out of this? What does this make you? Instead of being bitter about the situation, I think it made me um, an entrepreneur. Yeah. 
because yeah. I started entrepreneurship right when I started working. Okay, what, what were you doing? I would uh, sell second-hand shoes. Oh, so nice. Because my salary couldn't meet my obligations. Mm -hmm. So my obligation was really, the number one thing was to take myself to school. And then I had my sisters who were in, um, so there's a big gap between, it was my sister, my late sister and I, two years difference. And then from her to the next one is like 10 or so years. Oh, wow. So there was a huge gap between myself and the next person. So yeah. they were, I think, in primary school then. So um, I also thought it wise that I helped them because they were at private schools. And for them going to government schools was like, no, I think I can help out here. Yeah. So I was helping them go to school. I was taking myself to school. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I could use these same people within the office to sell. Mm. So I opted to sell secondhand shoes. And that wasn't easy. Because you had to go and get a bell. Then it was Longo Longo Road. You don't know what's in the bell. But yeah. I think that's the same thing even it's now. It's still today, huh? yeah. Like you yeah. can open a bell and you find everything is bad. So the shoes, you only had a number of pairs, but at least you needed 20 pairs to be good shoes mm -hmm. for you to make your markup, and then the rest you could sell them like that. So I started that in 1993. Wow. Yeah. That, that is really, really... Any, any child of yours that is following your footsteps that you can see, they have that entrepreneurial mind? And As in my sisters? Or my your, child? Yeah. Uh, Yes, our last born child. She, uh -huh. But she's, oh my goodness, she's a spender. She's so <laughs> much of a spender. But yes, she has all these entrepreneurship um, traits in her. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. So now, why, why did you leave? When did you get into like um, formal employment full time after you were done with school? When did you start working for the banks? The first job, was it a bank? Yes. It was the a same bank? bank that I worked for, yes. So oh, so you were going into school, you were working for the same bank that you started working yes. for after. Oh, nice. So I was employed on a temporal basis. Mm -hmm. Then I think after six, no, after a year, I was picked on a permanent position. Mm -hmm. But that, the, the schooling continued. Mm -hmm. So yes, I would do evening part-time. And then, so that was, it was hectic because we lived in... Um, Mauzu area, it's no longer called that, but it's some place after Zanmone. Prism is on the left if you're coming in from town, mm -hmm. and it's on the right. Transport was difficult then. If you didn't have your own car, yeah. it would be very difficult to get. So you'd have to connect, you get on a bus to Mandevu, and then there you get on the, the vans to home. Or you'd have to get on a bus from town yeah. to Cabanana, and then you walk to home, which was a long distance so you can imagine knocking off almost 20 hours and then going home so i'd always find my dad waiting for me at the bus stop. <laughs> ah that's crazy yeah i would always find him waiting for me until i knock off then he would, we would walk home together yeah where was your mother she, she was there she yeah. still is there okay mm. so you you worked for that bank for how long 24 years up to 2017. oh wow where did you stop? The bank had been sold to a different uh, institution and I didn't feel it right to move with them. Uh, so you just then just... I opted out. That's when you left for more employment? Yes. <laughs> really? And you didn't want to get... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people want jobs in the bank because they think that's where the money is. And then you decided to stay away from... I think with every contract, it's you agreeing with what the offer is. Yeah. Yeah. So you only work for one bank? I only work for one bank. And but then, in between, Yeah. so remember I told you that I'd worked for a year as yeah. a temp, yeah. and then I got employed permanently. Yeah. So um, I started being given responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So at the time we had mm -hmm. like agencies away from the branch. Mm -hmm. So I was, um, I was transferred to an agency at uh, UTH where I worked, but would still report at the main branch. Okay. So um, during the time that I worked there, we had a fraud. And back then in, in the banking industry, if a fraud happens, the whole department goes because it's believed that there are processes that have been happening that 
you cannot you all agree to you cannot pretend not to be aware of yeah yeah so they would let everybody go and then you have to explain yourself as to why they should take you back so 2015 i was dismissed because of the fraud that happened it was quite huge yeah. and um, so i appealed and they couldn't take me back they said that we were too close with the person that was so i would have i should have known that this was taking place so in 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 between my fighting back to uh, to get back and um the time they took me back mm -hmm. i decided to work because they completely told me that they weren't going to to get me back wow. so i got a job with uth mm -hmm. in the accounts department so almost two years i worked with them while i was fighting to get back to, to the banking industry but if you ask me, I, it was a struggle to get back because I had a lot of flexibility in terms of hours when I worked at UTH. Uh -huh. So sometimes I would work one whole week, sometimes I would work in the night. It was an accounts department, but you'd still work in the night and you'd get your nights off. Mm -hmm. So that was like a plus. And also there were a lot of different resources in terms of working from different areas so you get to know different people and personalities and it gave me a broader perspective of things but because I wanted to clear my name oh, yeah. because I mean a fraud it's you are a thief yeah. so when I finally managed to get to convince them that this didn't happen and we went through all the processes it was like a relief moment but I'm thinking okay what do I do? Should I go? Just prove myself and then go back go to back. the... Yeah. So that could... There was no way I could have put my job there on standstill yeah. at UTH. And then, yeah. So anyway, I resigned at UTH and then went back okay. to... Yeah. And so how long did you years. work after... Before you completely left? After you went back from... So UTH. it's a total of 24 from okay. the time I started. Yeah. Because those two years were counted as part of... I was they, still working, okay. so yeah, they paid me for the two years. Oh, it was a handsome... Uh, they paid you for the two yes, years? Yes, they paid wow. me for the two years, and uh, yeah, so when I got back then, I started rising. Mm -hmm. Maybe because of the exposure also that I had at UTH. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I quickly rose to... Nice. Yeah. So now I'm thinking, you, you, you are in the banking sector, your husband is in the media sector, and uh, you, but you've always managed to, like... You, you were always in the background, never. Why did you decide that? I mean, we see a lot of uh, other wives who want to be seen with their husband in the spotlight. Why were you more on laid back? I think the only people that knew that, oh, this is you, it's maybe us who were or close to him, people didn't even know. I, I noticed recent, there was a time, I think it was sometime last year, mm -hmm. you posted something about uh, what helps couples and I think there was a photo of you and Innocent mm -hmm. and then like bloggers oh started goodness, sharing. Yeah, that, was, that was really so ha, bloggers it's... started sharing. Like and then people were like, Oh, this is the one. Finally we get to see others are like, Oh, he's married. Why did you decide to stay in the background for so long? Actually, even now mm -hmm. I don't like to be in a space. I mean it's um the way I was working as a formal employment. Yeah. I don't think people go to people's workplaces. Yes, I mean to pick their wives to, yeah. you know, but you don't go inside their workplaces to, you are, that's the way I take it. That's yeah. his workplace in as much as he's in the limelight. He's doing his job. Yeah. Yeah. So I've always thought it that way. And also privacy for the family, especially for the children. I think it's, um, it's been, it's, I think, well, I don't want to say we've done better, we could have done better, but I think the best, the things that we put in place, we tr we've tried as much as possible to keep the family away from his job. Mm -hmm. And why? Like I mentioned, it's, it's, it's his job, not yeah. ours as a family. So yeah, yeah we've, we really try to separate his work and, and the family. So now that you are, uh, you're not on, you are not very active on social media, you took long to join social media, 
did it ever reach you like maybe bloggers write something negative about him negative posts about him long posts about him like maybe at your workplace where people asking questions or maybe people are just maybe just side eyeing no actually or family members right family even up to now nobody talks much maybe maybe because i don't allow them uh -huh. i think you you invite people into your life so if if I won't let you come close yeah. if I don't want to get what you're saying. And even social media, even if I wasn't on social media, I would get people send stuff to me on WhatsApp. Oh, they'll send? Yes, they'll wow. send stuff and, oh, this is what's happening. And I'll tell them, uh, I don't want to know. Yeah. So from then, very, actually people wouldn't, wouldn't. He, yeah. he would come and tell me, oh, there's this happening, there's whatever. We'll talk about it and, but that wouldn't affect me in that it's expected in your industry that people will talk. Not everybody likes you. Yeah. And when you accept that, it makes things a whole lot different. And like you said, even at the office, um, I actually don't introduce myself as his wife. I never, except that, yes, the last name, some people would <laughs> ask. But I don't... I don't know, some, most people have said, why don't you ride on his back? Yeah. No. Then it means the people that will be following me are following me because of him, but not about me. Mm -hmm. And not because I want to be known as me, but I'm a different individual. Yes, he's, he's different, I'm different. Together as a couple, yes. If there's anything, friends around us as a couple, yes. Yeah. But individuality, we've kept our lives like that. That's so nice. even at the office, I mean, he would come. I don't know if you'd notice. Every time we meet, we, we kiss. Yeah, yeah, I know that. We made it like that way before we even got married. Yeah. Like in marriages, you have problems and things like that. But we looked at it from that angle that if obviously you are going to kiss, even if you're upset with one <laughs> another, there's going to be that room of you negotiating and talking. So way before we got married, we decided that's what we were going to do. Mm -hmm. So it's become second nature to us. And so he walks in the banking hall and meets me and we kiss. But as he's coming through the banking hall, the person I'm with talks ill about him. Not knowing because, you're, you're yeah, oh my God. because I've kept my life that private. So we worked with this person for a very long time and she never knew that he was my husband. So he's walking in and she, I'm just quiet. So he comes, kisses me. <laughs> you should have seen her face. Oh my She's God. Like, oh, Mrs. K, I am so sorry. I'm just like, no, no, that's, that's okay. So we talked, blah, 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 and he leaves. And she comes back apologizing. I said, that's what you feel about him. I won't stop you with the emotions that you have towards him. That's you. Yeah. So if you don't like him, you don't like him. Yeah. So I won't force you to like him just because, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. I love your perspective. I think you, you, you're a strong woman. I was telling you behind the scenes, I'm like, I can't manage to be, I feel like it's scary. I always feel sorry for the people that are not in the spotlight, that are being dragged by the people because of their partners. Mm. And these people didn't choose to be in the spotlight. Yeah. They are in there because of their partners. Because of their partners. So it's a, it's a bit tricky, but... Um, you guys have, I think a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people, especially those that are married to celebrities, can learn something from that. I really feel that that's a safe space. It gives you some kind of, at least, mental. Your mental state is a bit. Yes, I mean we protected because mm. because I feel actually a lot of people bring in dirt. Yeah, we all have a past. Yeah. And even as we're leaving now, there could be a mistake that I could have made. Yeah. But it doesn't mean the whole world should know about that. Yeah, that's true. So just because it's in, so they'll bring all oh, your wife this and, you know, yeah. and already I, I, at one point, some, some person, very well-known person, comes to the office. He then knew that I was married to him and tells me that he had seen him at Intercontinental with a girl. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, but they were coming from a room, and that was me. So we, it, it was me, and he was describing and talking about. So I just went like, yeah, but Nora, why aren't you? I said, it was me. No, Unama. 
But why would I lie? Even if it was another girl. So he does a lot of so yeah. people come like tell you like that? Yeah. I think with him I don't know. Wow. You know I really don't know what what the motive was, but he just came and told me bluntly oh that he, he was with a girl and they were coming from so imagine if it wasn't me and it's true that yeah. he was actually coming from there. That's what I'm then thinking, what? Like, how, how do you tell somebody like that? Mm. But that happens to be me he was talking about. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a lot. Like, mm. ah, that's a lot. But uh, <laughs> why did you choose? And uh, now we, we see you, you cancel uh, couples, you mentor couples on finances. Why did you choose couples in particular? So, um, when, when I worked, so I'll take you back to the time I was working. Mm -hmm. When I worked at UTH, the same place, no, not UTH as an institution, mm -hmm. but at the agency under the, the bank. Okay. At the time, back then, they used to be, you know how you have your statements now mm -hmm. on, but back then there were books that would write in. So you'd record, so you'd have a whole statement recorded. Oh, this is the amount of money that you have. You've withdrawn so much, you've deposited so much. Yeah. And so your statement would be in this book. And there was this particular man, every time he left his book. And, you know, we wondered. And at the time I was quite young, I wasn't even married. But we would laugh about it. And you'd say, Nobody, nobody should come here and, you know, so he left it in our custody. I'm saying our custody, I don't even think the manager then knew, but as tellers, mm -hmm. so would, like, he's going on to the next counter, you've seen him, he's on that queue, you just move the book onto the other counter and he transacts and leaves it there. So he would just check that you've done your recordings and mm -hmm. he'll leave it there. So one time we had an opportunity to find out from him, like, why do you leave your book here, mm -hmm. you know? And then he mentions, ah, oh, Kunyumba. The moment she sees that there's money on, on this account, she wants everything out of this um, account. It didn't make a lot of sense then. Yeah. But it's those things now that this lady coach that was teaching me on social media, so when she mentioned about helping ladies, women in my country, I then opened up a Facebook group. So I was then sharing with people. And every Friday, I think, I would go in there talking about finances, how you'd manage this. And from that group, a lot of women were now talking about how it's difficult to save as a family because their husbands are not on the same page with them. And some of them would even say, I am, I'm in debt. My husband doesn't know. The moment he finds out, I think this marriage is ending. So there were a lot of those issues. And then I realized that even at the time that I was working, even within my members, mem uh, staff members, that used to happen. So people would come to me. So I think because of my background, I ended up being a saver. So mm -hmm. even on, and back then people would check people's accounts, like staff members. Yeah. So they would come and ask for money. Oh no, like, yeah, can we have, we'll give you at month end, which is not a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would give. And so every time I would have different people come, to ask for money. For me, it was like, oh, there's nothing. I'm not using this money. And even the interest wouldn't be much. So better somebody else uses it. Yeah. Others would openly come and say, oh, money is not enough at home. So that's why. So it means they are sitting on a loan because the institution would give us advances. They're sitting on the loan. They're sitting on an advance away from the loan. And so when the salary comes, it will hit their loan, it will hit their advance, yeah. and they would have little going home. So now when I started hearing these problems, I started reflecting on what was happening back then. And even few of friends around would talk about their finances at home. Then I thought, why not start? Because this is an institution. Yeah. It's a smaller institution. Why not start helping couples who would manage their homes and eventually have a stronger society. Because way before COVID, I think 2018, 2019, we had a lot of people taking their lives because of debt. debt yeah. So that just moved me into helping couples. There are a lot more individuals that I help, 
but my objective is to help couples so that they can have a strong financial foundation in their marriage. How often do you get like the couples to come? Because I think I would love that, like uh, to see a lot of, because yeah, like you've said, a lot of people complain because people are not on the same page. I remember I got on a cab one time and this taxi driver was telling me how he divorced his wife because she was getting loan after loan and then the, the loan sharks were now getting yeah. stuff from their house. Mm -hmm. So he was like, I'm done. I paid loans, then she went to get more loans. Mm -hmm. So I've chased her now out of my house. Mm -hmm. So he was telling me, saying, Bakazi, move out of Me in a party, you know, such yeah. things. So that's where this is coming from. This is it, so it's a serious issue. It is a serious issue. But you know, um, I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. We were never schooled about money, as in no. handling money. The same here. It's, it's, you are learning through the ropes. You are learning yeah. from your home. Mm -hmm. So it means whatever you saw at home, m with most people, that's who they are. Yeah. So if there was debt at home, it's normal. Because they lived through that, and it's okay for them to have debt. Yeah. Also the lifestyle that we're leading. You see your friend has got this. They are driving this kind of car. Mm -hmm. You do not know that actually they are being sponsored by their workplace to yeah. have this nice car. You also want to go and get this car. Yeah. So you end up getting loans which you are not able to service. Mm -hmm. So that brings in the gap. Also, we are all have different personalities. Even if you find a saver like me, but their money personality is very different from mine. Mm -hmm. You have an investor, you have... Remember, I told you about my child who's a spender, yeah. but on the same side, she's an entrepreneur. But how do you then marry these people? Mm -hmm. So with that, I decided then to take a course on financial management, which could help me help couples. Because what I knew, yes, earlier you had asked me about accounting and banking. So yes, there's a lot of accounting in banking, but Money management is very different even from banking. I handled people's monies. I was given a respons huge responsibility of handling huge sums of money. But we were told, this is not your money. You look at it like paper. That's the only way you work. Because imagine you don't have any money in your bag, but you have stacks and stacks of money that you're working discipline. with. Yes. So that requires discipline. Yeah. You don't have anything in your bag, but you have huge amounts of money. So managing that, yes, people's money you manage, but your own money you're failing to manage. Yeah. So there are principles and money rules that would help you through. School will only teach us what money is, an exchange and it will end there. If you're doing economics, yes, all that comes in place, but you as an individual, it wasn't taught. So now when I did this course, there's a lot of um, money mindset. What kind of money mindset do you have? What kind of money personality do you have? So that's different. So a money personality, you need to understand yourself. So you understand yourself first before you understand your partner. Then, then you go like, how can we align? You don't want, you've heard of people saying Nizamu Chinja when they get married. Yeah. Why should you? That's who he is. Yeah. So if you're getting married to this person, you are agreeing that this is what he comes as, or this is how she comes as, then the two of us, as long as you've discussed. So people are not having conversations before they get married. And I like that. I, I really feel like, especially, I don't know if it's blacks or Zambia, where when, when somebody brings up money issues, especially a lady, it's like a man saying, Afun and Daram. Mm -hmm. But then, when I saw that you're doing premarital financial literacy, for me, that's, that's very important because I think you need to understand the money language before you say I do. Yes, you need to understand the money language. First, understanding yourself. Yeah. And when we get to do so, the first thing we do is we do a quiz. You come in as a couple, you do a quiz mm -hmm. to understand you and him. Mm -hmm. So afterwards, then you exchange your answers. <laughs> it's been... People have been shocked. Yeah. Then you go like, oh, okay. So this is why she behaves the way she does. Yeah. So once you understand each other, then you go like, okay, you are like this. I'm not going to change you. You are like this. But what is it that I can agree on? How far can I go? What will be non-negotiable mm -hmm. in this case? The other partner also. So you know your non-negotiables. 
So as your income, as his income, how you agree is totally up to you. So we are all different. Others want to manage their money collectively. They have one account where they're all putting up their incomes and then they're agreeing on how they budget. Yeah. Others prefer that they still have maintained their different accounts, but they'll still sit down and say, okay, what bills are you paying or what obligations are you taking care of? So each couple is different. So there's no way I, I will, as a person seated on this side, helping you as a couple, say this is the best way. You need to agree what's best for your family, but I'll give you scenarios, how this works, how that works, and how you can then be able to combine. How can people sign up for your classes? So um, I have through my social media platform and my WhatsApp. Yeah. So on Facebook, I'm Nora Chandakalaluka. Yeah. So uh, they can get me there. Same as uh, Instagram. Instagram is Nora Kalaluka. But yeah. Nice. I, I really like that. And uh, I think we need to come. <laughs> <laughs> Me and my husband need to come and uh, attend to uh, one of your classes. But how has been the response so far? So, like, through my chat, my biggest issue is those that are getting married. But at the time that they are getting married, they don't see the problem. Until they are in. Until they are in marriage. So I get a lot more people who are already married mm -hmm. trying to fix their problems. I want to get to a situation where I'm not fixing, but helping people so that they get to a place where, as they're going in marriage, they already understand their partner. It's easy for people to, to build wealth when you already are standing on a better footing, as opposed to, oh, there are now problems. How do we now get to solve these debt issues? How do we get to this point? Yeah. You would have wasted five years into your marriage by the time you settle. Yeah. But if you work at it now, before you actually get married, but the problem is I'm not getting, I think I've only had two couples, premarital. Even the two, one, one of them didn't complete the whole course. They just did part of it. But this other pair, they completed and they're quite happy. They are married. That's but I get a lot of people who are already married because they understand that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Nice. How long did you guys take to understand each other's financial uh, language? Uh, quite a while yeah. because my husband is a spender mm -hmm. he's a type who would tell you um, at the time I, I, I used to like wearing tights huh? yeah. and you know how they rip so sometimes maybe I would only have two and I'm, as I'm wearing it I uh, ah, complain my tight has ripped and he says ah, but you know that you need this thing so why do you get one or two pairs yeah. he would want you to get ten pairs you know, yeah. like, what's the point? You know that you're going to wear these things, so yeah. just get them. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I could have used that money for something for else, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. yes. But um, also, he's not mean with his money. Mm -hmm. So in as much as we would budget, it wasn't as strict as it is now after having gone through this course. It was then, we would know exactly what we want to buy, what we're saving on, mm -hmm. and so another thing, aspect that I talk about a lot especially when your family is growing is having to save for the children yeah. because school fees can be hectic be draining. so those are some of the reasons most people go into debt mm -hmm. so a school fee comes you're not able to pay you go and borrow to pay but before you borrow you need to know how you're going to pay but most people don't even look at it they look at the need now yeah. and go and pay so when now that obligation comes for you to pay it makes it difficult because you didn't look at it and at the time you were working with emotions as opposed to heading working with your head um, and your conscious state so most of the problems that we have are based on our subconscious what has been embedded on our subconscious we don't work with our conscious mind we work with our subconscious well, that makes sense yeah so saving for children is one of the highlights, key highlights for me, because I have a family. We went through that. Now we have a son in university. Mm -hmm. And so with other uh, platforms, you, we have a lot of other platforms where you can save for your children. A lot of insurance companies that are offering saving for children. So imagine if you lost, you lost your job, the, the insurance company would still be able to pay that. 
not just you losing your job, sometimes you lose your life. What happens yeah. to your child? So all those are things that we get to talk about, which most people don't want to talk about. People don't want to talk about money. They don't want to talk about death. But these are things that we they have. They happen. Yeah. yeah. So talking about them and you being in a position to make a decision to know exactly what you would do in your conscious state would help you. Nice. I like that. I really like that. So if, they, if people want, you want to be take part of these classes, couples especially, Nora Chandakaluk on Facebook, Nora Kalaluka on Instagram, follow her, they can inbox you. Yes. And uh, you start on. I'm sure she'll give you the details from there and uh, you can start your classes. We've seen a lot of people coming up and I think we are lucky in this generation because we have a lot of you that are coming out and sharing your financial secrets. It doesn't hurt to pay a little for something that will impact your life for a long time and uh, so we need to take this and grab them by the hands. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having Any me. last words? Well, um, to couples out there, yeah. it's not the end. When you are in debt, I think now I've concentrated so much on debt because I think that's where the biggest problem is. So when you're in debt, it's not the last thing. Mm -hmm. Don't divorce your wife. Find ways because another person that you're going to get to also has their own money problem. Yeah. So find, get together, find out what it is that you can work together with. Align your, your goals. It's because most of the financial goals are not written, so you won't share it with your partner and you won't know what your partner is thinking about. Yeah. So getting aligned with your financial goals will help you by obviously taking the course that I'm offering. And yeah. But then, uh, by the way, before we close, when you talk, uh, you've just talked about aligning and I just thought of uh, one very uh, common thing that happens in marriages. It's about uh, couples like women saying, my money is my money. My husband's money is our money. What do you say about it? What's your take about that? Okay. I always like to... Sorry, I'll ask you a question also yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. If... And mostly, the people who say my money is my money are people who are getting a lot more money than their husbands. I don't like to answer that question, but I always like to say, what did you agree on? For like your man will... Yeah. No, no, I'm not asking about you. Okay. What did you agree on when you were getting married? Yeah. The man will provide everything for you yeah. But you are a helper. So, if you are a helper, what is your money doing? What is your money doing for, your, for you as, an, as a woman? As a helper. <laughs> so, it's just working for you? Does it mean then that your husband will not, there's no part of his income that will work for you? Mm -hmm. So, those are questions that they should ask themselves. Their money is their money. What are they using their money on? Then, have you agreed to be with your partner? Because when you're wearing the missus name, you are saying, I belong to... I belong to this person. Yeah. So if you are belonging to this person, you are becoming together. You are making a family. That answers it all, guys. I think that's the answer. And you know, I've been wondering, the same thing you've asked, I've never just said it loud, like, so where does all your money go if it's just your money? Mm, if it's just your money. Because that's your household. That's, that's your household, yes. So this is where you find a lot of partners thinking that their wives are cheating on them because they have all this money, which they've saved, because their money is their money. Yeah. And he will not believe that you have a hundred thousand. You want to go and get yourself a car. Yeah. Like, where did you get this money from? Yeah. When have you been disciplined to keep this money? Yeah. But because your money has not been, you've probably been investing it and he's not aware. Yeah. So your money, in the course we talk about fun money. So you sit together as a couple, you agree. How much money will you spend without him asking you what have you used this money for? If it's a 3,000 quarter, you want to do your hair, you want to do your nails, you want to do whatever else. If he looks at whatever you've gotten and you also look at his going out, maybe probably having drinks with his friends and he'll come and say, that's my money. How are you going to feel? Yeah. So you need to sit and agree. Is it a 5,000 quarter we are all keeping as our money per month? Is it a 200 quarter where nobody asks? So it means out of that 5,000 kwacha, I can give whoever I want to give if I'm giving without having without to tell him. Asked, yeah. Yes. So you need to get to a point where you're all going to have money which you're going to use as an individual to, to satisfy you as an individual. Yeah. So that's, that's important in couples for you to have your own money even if you have your pot together or um, an account that you're using together as um, putting your monies together. But each of you needs to have 
this is my money. That's where that my money issue comes in. Nice. A lot to learn, guys. I think you can tell that we can go on about this financial uh, session. It can go on an hour, hour, but you have to attend to our classes. So reach out on social media and do that. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me once again. All right, guys. So this has been your girl, Helen, on Getting Candid with Helen. Keep subscribing to the channel. Bye-bye.